Okay, great. Okay, right. Thank you, Devan and Latisan. Thank you very much. So this will be effectively our week five, and week five is an interesting week that is starting with us, and we will have our so this week week five folder, which I already started in the morning, but I'll just you know I might be just rewriting those for some of the files over here. Okay. A few guys who have entered into the room. Right. So those who are joining us, they can just, you know, they can just be here and I'll talk about some of the some of the things over here. And I will just see what we'll be doing. Right. So we have to start HTML today, by the way. And uh, hypertext markup language. This is our week five. And uh, let me assure you that this is this is one of the very interesting language and hopefully you will enjoy it more and and uh, with the amount of effort that you have put in for javascript you will see that uh, you might not even need to to put in half of the effort in html by the way but anyhow it's it's a very important language it's uh, it's something that we will just you know talk about over here these are the notes that i made for the morning class but uh, I've just informed them as well. If I, I don't know if someone from that section is here or not, that I will upload for the part one. I'll upload this 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 session that we are having right now. So it's for everyone the part one of this week, right? Okay. So we we'll, we have to start hypertext markup language today, and it's basically based of all web pages. It's a language that we use to uh, basically develop our web pages in. So I'll just you know bring one thing one by one over here. And why did I discuss that? Because HTTPS, you know, we have discussed in our first week that HTTPS is hypertext transfer protocol that is used for the communication over the web. So over the web, when you do communication, usually the, um, the, the data that we send is basically all that data that we send or receive from one part of the other is typically what this, this is typically HTML data, hypertext markup language. So down deep, Whatever technology you discuss these days, whatever advanced technology in, in, in this era you talk about, you will see that base of all or towards the, towards the most basic form, you will always find hypertext markup language. Now, what is this hypertext markup language all about? I'll just, you know, first of all, I'll try to introduce this, this one over here. So hypertext is typically refers to, when you say hypertext, we typically refers to a linked text a text that is linked to some particular area. A text, if you click it, it will take you somewhere else. Hypertext is also called sometimes hotspot and hyperlink as well. If you see that it's, it can be called a hyperlink. And we know that it refers to a text that is, let me just close that one. It refers to a text that is basically linked text. Generally, if in our real life, we see that uh, usually it comes of a blue color and underlined text, we see anything written over there so we say that okay this is a link a link text is one when we click on that one it will just open a new page for us so that is hyperlink hypertext or hyper uh, hyperlink so hypertext is the link text okay Tarunbir, that's wonderful to know that you are from zbb section that's not a problem i'm happy to have you in so hypertext refers to the linked text a text that when you click on it it will take you somewhere else it will open new environment for you. Then let's talk about markup. What is this markup? Markup is typically defining the rules for a particular area. If we are defining a rule for a particular area, it is called markup. And we'll see the example shortly. That in HTML, those who are familiar, they would have seen that, for example, if I write B, and so whatever comes inside in between these two will be called as it has been marked up with uh, like you know with some styling with some rules so markup is typically speaking is defining uh defining a rule for a particular area and we'll talk about what is this what is this uh, this called and all these things we'll talk about that but first of all you need to understand that okay markup is what defining rules and regulations for a particular area and you know that uh, when i talk about this actually this will be bold text but this this text will not be bold, you know, why? Because 
because it is not inside this B. So I have defined the rule for this one. This is called markup marking up or markup defining rule for a particular section particular area make sense everyone so this is called markup so hypertext markup we have link text we will have we will use marking up like rules and regulations for a particular areas and we can just say that okay from this area to this area text should be bold from this area to this area text should be of this this type of this type of this type something like that then we talk about language it's a language but it's a scripting language. Here we must know the language and the difference between the difference between the scripting languages and compiled-based languages or compiler-based languages. You know, the C language that you have studied before, it was a compiler-based or compiled-based languages. And the, the, the HTML that we are starting, and of course, we have talked about this JavaScript as well, that most of these languages, they are compiled or scripting-based languages. By that, by that mean, that they are not the complete program is not compiled rather whatever line is understandable whatever line is good it will just you know uh, it will just produce the output and rest output will not be there so it's not a compiled language it's a scripting language it does not have those fancy loops fancy if and else conditions and whole things like that but it you but of course it has it has some scripting as i said it has some rulings it has some tags or something like that we'll talk about and it works basically that way. It, it works with, with those kind of things that it will have you know, some rulings implied, rulings applied for a particular area. And then we can just work on that particular area's ruling at that point. So hypertext markup language is the base of all modern programming web, like you know, website languages. As I told you that whatever language technology you work in for the web, you will definitely find down deep that there is HTML on their depth. So we need to know HTML. Now, I would like to discuss some of the HTML components. What is in HTML components? And first of all, we'll discuss that and then we'll talk about their examples in a code. So the very first thing that you want to discuss here is a tag. HTML has a concept of tag. So you might have heard about the tags these days in our you know, social media applications as well that there is something called a tagging or something like but this this tag is is a bit you know a bit more like that and a bit very similar different in philosophy from that from those kind of things so it, typically a tag is what it's separated from a regular content tags are special text names wrapped in less than sign some text in between and then greater than sign these two characters they are wrapped in between so for example if i write tag sign like you know less than sign then I write IMG and then I write greater than sign. This is called one tag. Make sense, everyone? This is called one tag. So a tag necessarily is the combination of a starting tag, like starting less than, less than symbol, some text in between, and then greater than symbol. This is called a tag in HTML. Now, one of example we have seen IMG is a tag. If I write just, just, just this thing, you will say, okay, it's a bold tag, B tag. It is an H1 tag. We'll talk about this is heading one, but this is a tag. So how do you recognize a tag? A tag is something that starts with less than sign, ends with greater than sign, and has some text in between that one. Make sense, everyone? Can I can I have a quick feedback from everyone? A yes or understood or something in the in the chat window? Wonderful. Thank you. So this is called a tag. Now there are different types of tags that we have. We have two types of tags. What is called singular tags, the tag that does not require a pair, that does, does not require a companion, and pair tags. What are pair tags? Mostly, you can understand that now singular tags are not used anymore, even though we'll use the IMG. But I'll tell you that we make them also a pair tag by some, by some, by some trick. But right now, just understand. Um, let's listen. For the time being, yeah, you are right. Search engine optimization. Rather than search engine optimization, you should understand that these tags are helpful in making our website readable by the screen readers, by the, by the web crawlers, and we will use these tags to represent our structural information of the website. Lethison, are you making sense of it? Yeah. So search, yes, search engine optimization also will work fine, but again, there is a way to do that. But in general, tags will be, uh, will help our, you know, our, uh, our website to be readable by the by the readers or by the crawlers or by something. Anyhow, 
If you see singular tag, so singular tag does not require a companion. IMG is enough for itself. But we will find out there are so many tags that require a companion tag, a starting tag and an ending tag. How to end a tag? Just use again the tag sign, just a forward slash over here. If you see a forward slash, if you put a forward slash, sorry, if you put a forward slash before this, like, you know, after, before the content, this becomes an ending tag. You know what I mean? So it's called a pair tag. Why? Because H1 needs a pair to tell me, okay, from what location to what location it is should be considered as H1 and rest should not be considered as H1. You know what I mean? But there are certain tags that are, you know, you can say starting tag and this is called ending tag. Closing and yeah, opening and closing borders. You are right, defining the borders for that one. Second, you're right. Understand everyone? So this is called a tag. A tag is what? Again, please remember, a tag is a combination of less than sign, greater than sign, some text in between. Less than sign, greater than sign, some text in between. Less than sign, greater than sign, some text in between. Make sense, everyone? Yeah, exactly. Similar to the block of code, you are right. It's basically blocking of the code, you are right. Now, let's talk about another component, which is element. And, and by the way, these definitions I have taken from your notes website. Let me, let me show you uh, these definitions I have taken from the notes website. So let me show you the notes webs, uh, oh, not three, two, 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 two. So I have taken these, uh, these definitions from here. So you see here, I just copied and pasted these definitions from here, but I'll talk about them because I wanted to talk about them. That's why I placed them in the notes. So element, everything from an opening tag to the closing tag, for example, H1 start. So it's an opening tag. It's a closing tag, something in between the contents in between. This collectively is called an element in HTML. Again, make sure you understand. Opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. If we combine these three, you will call this as one HTML element. You know what I mean? Let me just make it word wrap. So again, H1, chapter one, and H1, this is this will be called as one element. Here is an element is made up of an H1 tag, starting tag, and that is opening heading heading one tag, the text that contains chapter one, and a closing tag, H1. So it will be one. These three together create H1 element in the document. So if you see another example, this starting tag of B, some text in between, and ending tag of B. If I ask you what this collectively will be called, you will say it's a B element or a bold element. Make sense, everyone? Element is combination of starting tag, opening tag, closing tag, and some text in between. It will be called as element. Same way as over here, H2, it's a starting tag, it's ending tag. There is something in between. It will be called as a, as a, as an element, one element in HT. I hope it's making sense for everyone, every one of you. And I would like to just, you know. Okay, uh, you thought what? Someone said, I thought, let's say I, B does not need, oh no. So B, B also needs a, pre, a closing tag, remember. But B is not uh, too much used these days. Yeah, B, is, B, B needs a bold tag, right? But we do not use it. And I'll tell you why we do not use it anymore. We use a strong instead of this one. If you have text wrapped by two pair of tags, is that one or two elements? Uh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, so I'll, I'll take your question, uh, Ho Fung. You say if we have a text wrapped by two pair of text, is that one? Oh, that's a wonderful question. So uh, you know what Hans, uh, like uh, he wants to say? He wants to say, for example, I have H1, and then I have B, and then I have hello, and then this B is closing, and then H1 is closing. Hans, uh, is, is that your question about? Is it, is it one element or two elements? Is that your question? Okay, wonderful. Now, this is a very good question. Now, can anyone tell me, is that a one element or two elements over here? I would be happy to know from you guys. Is that one element or two elements? Again, it's a question from my side now. And then I'll discuss. And let's see how many of you come up with that one. Is it one element or two? Okay, some say one, some say two. Lekison say one element. And Het says two elements. Okay, that's wonderful. You said it needs to have all three. That's wonderful. Now listen about that. And now, Lekison, this is good that you have given them. See here, H1 is the starting tag. And this H1 is the ending tag. Now, regardless what is inside, this all will be called, this all will be called as the content of this H1. 
Lethison, are you getting that? This is very important concept. Regardless, there is a tag. Don't worry about that. There is a tag. You say, okay, the content between H1 is, is something. I don't know. But this is the content. So you will call, yes, H1 is one element over here. So, okay, one element is H1. Now, let's come inside that. When I come inside that, I say an opening tag and an ending tag, and there's some text in between. Oh, I will say this is another element, and this is called element, uh, you know, uh, the, the B element, bold element. So I will say, okay, here we have not one, rather we have two elements over here. Again, is, does that make sense? All those who said one element, they are understanding what I'm saying. Don't worry about what is inside that. You just worry about, okay, this is the content of that one. So content might contain the other text. Don't worry. You will count that. Can you repeat? Okay, Smith, I'm repeating that. Smith says, Smith, see here. I, the question was, no, 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 Lethison. No, 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 Lethison. No, no. You are again not, not understanding. Okay, Smith, listen about that. So Smith, elements definition is that opening tag should be there. Ending tag should be there, and there should be some content inside that. Now, for the time being, if I convert this content with dot, 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 something like that, you don't worry about what is inside that. Will you call this complete as one element? And again, dot, dot, dot means there is something in between. Will you call it as element, Lethison? Yes or no? You'll say, yes, this is one element. You're right. You'll say one element. Okay. Now, don't worry about that. I, I come inside that, and I write a B. And hello and write a b now you you agreed upon that that this was an element lethison is that right centurion are you understanding this was an element but now when i came inside that i found out there is a b tag there is some content and there is b tag ending i will say okay this is one another element and again so now again what is happening i'm saying that okay this is one element b and this is one element h but whatever is inside H is not your problem. <laughs> you should not confuse it with the, with the elements definition. <laughs> Hofan got it? <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm happy to have this question. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Lethison, I think you are, uh, I, I don't know if you're joking or you are, you're really, you are really serious. You know, element can be. A... Yeah, exactly, Senthur, and this is the point. So the content of one element can be another element. That's a one. And now, by the way, by the way, now, let me ask you a question. There is another tag, uh, there is another I element. Now, I would be happy to know, how many elements are there now? Three. Divan, you understand that? Why three? Because now, again, this H1 is an element, starting and ending, and something in between. No, no worries what is inside that. Then again, there is a B tag. Okay, B element. B starting, B ending, and everything inside that is, both, is, is a B element. Then I have an I tag starting, then some content, then I ending. I'll say, okay, this is another element. So here we have three elements. I hope everyone is now good with it because it, it was a good question, Hofan, by the way, because you have asked a very nice question and, and you see that how many people have was involved with this discussion. That's wonderful. Need closing tag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's a, that's an important, that's a second, wait for that. When we have, as I talked about this IMG, I will still call it, uh, call it as an element. And I'll tell you why. But right now, just consider, okay, IMG is not a, you know, according to our definition, if there was something over there, you know what I mean? And there was IMG closing, then you would have called this an element. But right now, consider I'm saying, I'm saying a wrong thing. But I'll consider, okay, image is not an element, right? I'm just saying that, just consider it. But today, I'll tell you shortly that what does that mean? How it is also an element. Second, you got it? It is also an element, but of course, it does not come upon our definition of H element right now. So we we'll won't call it element right now. So that's a wonderful thing. Now I would like you guys to do something because I have already done this, created this document and I will just, you know, uh, rather delete this one because I will just, you know, I'll just delete that. Now in our folder, in our folder, I want you to create a new HTML document because I want you to just, you know, create that and start running that and then we'll discuss most of the things. So come over here and create a new file and call it index.html. You might get a different logo. Don't worry about that because I have a theme activated over here. Now create this file, index.html, everyone. Okay, I will take feedback once I complete this document. Now everyone just type with me. Type this one, and you will when you when you 
type less than sign, you will get this doc type HTML. Hit enter, you will get this doc type HTML. And you keep on saying, like hitting save over here. You, you know, whenever you make a change, a, a circle appears over here. And if you hit save, that circle goes away. It means we have document is saved. Everyone has done that. Okay. After that, again, tag sign and type HTML. And HTML. Sorry. <laughs> so I just made a mistake. I'll just. So just, just type HTML and close that. And you will get a tag ending body by itself. Done, everyone. Be with me because I would take a feedback later, shortly later on. After this, after this, after this HTML, come over here and type tag sign head. You will get the pair by automatically itself. Head. Now after that, type something. Title and write my first my first web page. Just write this title inside that one. And now come out of title, come out of head. And after head, come over here and write body. I'm right now technically writing by myself, but you will see we don't need to write this code. I'm just trying to make you understand the structure. Otherwise, this all this code is always available automatically. Don't worry. But I want you to understand the nitty gritty details of that. Inside that, you come and write H1 and write my first web page. Again, the, I, I just written down the same message that I that I did, didn't type. Now, if you remember, we have done that prettier installation already. When I hit save, my document will become prettier. Is it become prettier for everyone when you have completed this one? Body, head, title, HTML. And now when you hit save, it becomes prettier by itself. That's wonderful, Sanfuran. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hengi, one means yes, it's happening for you. That's wonderful. So you know, if I just if I just miss you know, uh, this is space something and something like that, it will always do it, its job and it will make it very nice. So if I hit save, you see that document becomes good. Oh, Divan, it means that you did not install prettier extension and you did not do the format on save. Divan, have you attended any class before? <laughs> oh, you have installed that. Okay. So Divan, uh, would you mind sharing your screen and let us uh, like uh, show us that what's going on with you? If you, if you would, if you are, Easy with that. You know, uh, if you remember, we have, so let me tell you, we have in extensions, we have installed an extension called Prettier. So you can go in view extension and check if that Prettier code formatter is installed in your system. Divan, is it installed in your system? Divan, I'm talking to you. You can unmute yourself by the way for a second. It is installed here. That's good. It is installed now, now. Wonderful. Now see here. Now, now, now I'll tell you the other thing. If you go to file preferences and settings, file preferences settings. Here you see if you write format. So there is an option format a file on save. It is checked over here. Make sure. Divan, I think you are unmuted. No, it's Chirag is unmuted. Okay, you that you did that. Okay, and also, second, this is a very bad question right now. So when you write code formatter, you get a default code formatter, Divan. Do you see prettier code formatter over here? The one I'm not talking to, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. Okay, you see that. Okay, wonderful. So if it is done, then you can close this settings. You can close this all. And now you see the one uh, that if your document is like this, scattered all over the page and you hit save, it should be formatted now. The one, is it happening now? Second, no problems. So second, just, just don't worry about that. Second, it's not the right time to ask this question. We can discuss that later on. Okay, Divan, that's wonderful. Second, I'll discuss that with, with you. Don't worry, right? Okay, so, so everyone has done that. That's wonderful. Now, if you have done that, first of all, make sure, you remember I told you that this circle appears if your document is not saved. And when you hit save, that circle goes up. You see my notes also showing this circle. If I click and save, then that goes away. It means my document is saved. Now I want to run this document. 
a very bad way of running this. First of all, I'm telling you the bad way of running this. You know, this will be stored somewhere on my on my hard drive, and you know, it is in week five. It is this index.html. You can also find that in your hard drive. You will find that in your hard drive. Go there and double click on this one. This is my web page running over here. And I will do it side by side with my document. And I'll close this one. How many of you can run this page like this? Uh, again, by going into your folder. It should be into your folder, index.html, double click on it, and it will run. And it will run like this. And again, I'll just place the side by side. How many of you see this output? Okay, Henry sees that. Sees that. And Centurion sees that, sees that. That's wonderful. Anyone else? Okay, Romar sees that. Kelly sees that. That's wonderful. I'm understanding that everyone has done that. Let's say has done that. Now, now, can you do one thing for me? Come over here in this document. Uh, hit enter and maybe write one more H1 and write another heading. And just, you know, and hit save. First of all, hit save. And I'm closing this document. I'll run that again. Go back to your folder and double click on that one. And now this page will run again and I can place it again with my with my code. So now do you see another heading updated? The code setup. Can you help me after the class? Smith Kumar. Yes, Smith, I will definitely do that. Don't worry. Smith, I'll do that. Don't worry. So you see updated document, can you? Aaron, do you see that updated document? Another heading? That's wonderful. If you see the another heading. That's wonderful. Say again, that's good. You can use H2, H3, whatever you want. But right now, uh, my purpose is that to tell you that this is not the good way of running the document. Now, now let me tell you how we will run the document. Typically, you see, I have to just go so laborious. This is I have to go over there, double click on that one. Then this document will run, and then I place it with my code. And again, if I made a change over here, there is one another way. I can write another H1, another yet again, right? So if I hit save, I can refresh this document. Refresh. You see, I will get the output. F5, yes, second, yes, right. But this is not the good way or professional way of running that one. What is the good or professional way? I'm telling you, everyone. Uh, go to your extensions again. Go to your extensions again. And here, find out an extension, live server. Live server. Find out live server. And hit on that one. Do you see this, this Wi-Fi sort of icon and live server with that one? Everyone, please install that. And when you install, write done in the chat window. Install that and run it done. Yeah, Ritwik Day. Yeah, right, right, you're right. Thank you very much. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Most of the guys have done that. Done, done, done. I would I would be happy if 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 everyone can just quickly, because it's very easy and to install, you just you know go in there and, and install the extension. Divan has done that. Smith Kumar has done that. That's wonderful. Now close this extension window and come to your Explorer window. Now see, right click on your document. The first option should be open with live server. Click on that one and your document is now running again. I'll just take out from this one because you know, just want to show this document. Okay. Okay, how many of you how many of you now see that the document is running in a very different way? I'll show you that what is the different way. But another very important thing over here. When I update my document, I make some changes. I have deleted the two headings. See, when I hit save, what happens? You will be very happy to see that, Chun. Chun you see here, my document gets updated automatically. I don't need to do anything. How many of you have done that? I would like to see a me over there. Second, it means that it is not installed. Okay, second, I'll 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 talk to you. Just just let me. Okay, you can write a chat window me as Romar Lethison have written down that you can see that. Now, if I make any changes, very easy. I come over there and I write another heading, new heading, and I hit save and I get the document updated over there. Cool, Romar, is that cool? <laughs> it's really interesting. And now 
we will run this document. And this is the right way of checking the documents because our server is running. And now I'm getting the page from a server. You, can anyone tell me 127.0.0.1 from my first lecture, first week lecture, if someone has seen that. It's called local host. It's, it's called home address. You know, my own machine has become a server and it is serving as a web page. Lethison, you know that? You remember that? 127.0.0.1. There is no place on earth like 127.0.0.1, like my home. You know what I mean? So actually, this is this is the page is running over here. So we have we have seen our HTML page. We have run that first HTML page. And my my one question, and after that we'll take a quick break, and then um, rather no no not not the break right now. We are still still in the beginning. So no no we are not won't, won't take the break. But can anyone tell me how many elements are there? <laughs> my question, big question. I I'll, I'll come back to those who are having problems. But first of all, I have a big question. How many tags? How many elements are there? in this screen, in this page. How many elements? Count that and let me know. How many elements? Count them and let me know. Smith says six, okay. I'll check that. Aaron says six. Hengi says six, okay. I'm waiting for the others, everyone to just, just count them. Romar says six. Okay, Romar, might be you might be right. Okay, your maybe you may be right. Six. Lethison says three. Okay, Chun says six. Anyone else? Okay, let's start counting them. First of all, is this an element? No, because it does not have an ending tag of doc type. You know what I mean? And remember. This, whenever something starts with a sign of exclamation, it has a different meaning. I'm not telling right now, but this is not an element. Forget about it. Now, we have got a facility over here. We can just contract and expand them. If I contract them, this HTML looks like one element. Everyone agrees with me? One element, right? If I open that, I come inside that, that I find another one, head. Head is in one element, looks like head is one. So two, inside head, there is a title and everything. This is three. Got everyone? Now I'll close the head. If I come inside the body, body is number four. Is that right? And now this H1 is number five. And this H1 is number six. So we have six elements all together over here. How many of you understand that one? Six elements. Because you know, as Kenny was saying seven, Kenny, this is not an HTML element. I'll tell you what is that. I'm not telling you right now what is that, but this is not that one. Okay, so let's say you said three. So you might be thinking about this HTML. You are just thinking about this head and body, right? So Lethison, there are some tags in between that as well. You know what I mean, Lethison? And everyone, by the way. So those who said six, that were, they, were, they were correct, that this had six elements over there. Six elements I can see over here. Now, first of all, did you find it cool that now I'm just changing my document, hitting save, and my document gets refreshed? And it's always good to run document like this rather than like this. I'll show you side by side. You see, you see my 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 address bar. How bad it looks like. See users normal PC one drive Seneca Sen Spring lecture code and that. This is not the way to run websites. This is not the professional way to run website. And and on the other side, on the contrary, do you see it? how beautiful how beautiful URL is here? <laughs> Let us in. Do you see that? So this is like home, a home. I, am I, I am running a server on my own machine. And yes, it's a clean and simple. It's not like that file, colon, colon, forward slash. This is bad. My, I should always check my page like this. And this will be the way we'll be checking our HTML documents. So make sense, everyone. Now I will talk. start talking about this HTML document in details. And in the morning session, I asked those guys that I, I did not discuss from this point onwards. So whatever is the part time from this point onward, it would be a new thing for the morning session as well, and JJ students as well. Anyhow, let's start discussing this one because we were talking about, if you see, we were talking about HTML components and we have talked about tags. So yes, we see multiple tags over here. HTML is a tag by itself. But again, if I combine everything, it will become an element. Head is a tag. And if you combine everything, it becomes an element. Body is a tag and it becomes an element, right? So what is the other thing? We talked about elements and then let's talk about attributes. This is very important. Attribute, what is attribute? 
Attributes are the optional characteristics of an element defined using the style name or name is equal to value. For example, PID is equal to error message hidden. There was an error downloading the file. So now if you see here, I can assign an ID to an H1, for example. So I say ID is equal to, for example, I say first. Now, do you see that I have defined it inside the tag sign, starting tag sign, in a key value pair. Something defined as a key value pair within the tag sign is called attribute, which gives extra functionality to some of the tags. Does that make sense? You will see, you will see in, 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 in literature and also you will see over here, there is attribute lang equal to ing. You know? So I am writing an HTML element, uh, HTML document its language is equal to English. Exactly. Sagan, uh, I don't want to talk about the selectors right now because it's not, uh, it won't be familiar to everyone. I'll talk about your right selectors. But just right now understand that attributes give extra functionality to a tag. I can define a paragraph over here, for example. A para paragraph is a paragraph text. This is some text here, right? So it's a paragraph text. So I can write a paragraph text over here. You see this output is coming over here. And I can say I have another paragraph and this paragraph should be different from that one. So I will say ID and this is second paragraph, second para or something like that. So this is second para with an ID as attribute. You know what I mean? So we can have ID. So I have given this. So this is an optional parameter that I have as optional optional something that I've given. So everyone understands this attribute, optional value being given to something to recognize that separately. Wonderful, Sagan, thank you very much. Now the last thing which is discussed over here is an entity. And I wanted to discuss that, that's why. What is an entity? Entity is a very interesting thing. Now see here, if I just delete all this, in output, I want to display this one, HTML. I want to display this HTML and then display it in the output. You know what I mean? I want this to be output over here. Now, when I put that and I hit save, I don't see anything over here. Why? Because you know, HTML is a tag and my document, my browser says, okay, HTML was starting here, but then there is another HTML. I don't worry about that, but this is a tag. I will render it. So it's rendering it. It's not printing it. Is that making sense to everyone? It will never, it will never print this HTML. It will never print the body, the tag body. Why? Because it understands, okay, there was a body and by mistake, he has added one more body. But anyhow, wherever I'll find body, I will render it. I will not print it. Smith, Smith again, see. Smith, for example, listen, listen to this one. Smith, if I write this, this, this HTML, not even this one, I want this to be as output. I want to display this over here. You know what I mean? And I hit save. I don't see anything. Smith, do you see that? I don't see anything. Why? Because Smith, because whenever compiler sees that there is a tag sign, there is some text, and it's a basically a tag also. It will it will it will render it rather than printing it. Smith, are you getting that concept? So for example, I want to I want to type, for example, I want to I want to print an output of P. I just want to print this P. But will I get that? No. Compiler will say, okay, it has a P tag. <laughs> You know, it is considering that a tag, of course. Why? Because, because even though it's in the body, but compiler is so friendly, it will say, okay, no problem. I understand that you are writing HTML again and paragraph again. Smith, are you making a real sense? Now, listen, if I want to print that, I will have to take help from a special character. M percent LT, this one. I'll tell you, don't worry. M percent GT, this one. Do you understand what, what was my output, required output? I wanted to have this required output over here. So these are called entities in HTML. When entities start with what? I'll, I'll just let you know. If I, run to, if I want to write, to, so M percent and this uh, semicolon, these are, this represent entity and something that comes in between becomes a character. I'll, I'll, I'll show you there are lots of characters. So if I write a P and M percent GT, you know, less than, greater than, this is greater than. So now if I hit save, you will see P also appears over here. 
you might be thinking what's going on okay so this is there are so many entities that we can use i'll show you some more some more over here if i come over here and i write percent c o p y copy m percent this one right and i hit save see what appears on my output the copy symbol you know what i mean if i say uh, for example reg reg i think yeah it's r e g reg registration symbol if i hit save i get a registration symbol these are called special characters these are called entities do you understand everyone understand that and this is in your notes they have given a complete list of that one so see here i'll show you these are all the special characters that i can type in my website you know what i mean for example i want to have this special character looks good to me out of context but my user code new file is only showing text file i am unable to get to any other type of file uh let us some it's a problem and we can if you want i can i can ask you to share your screen and I, we can we can find out together is that is that okay with you okay that wonderful so i'm stopping sharing and also i will have to allow you because its sharing options are very bad okay multiple can share that and okay sharing options advanced sharing option all participants can share that okay so netizen would you would you like to uh, that would you like to share your screen okay so that's wonderful okay so which one is the folder where you are working right now on files no 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 not new file first of all you have to open your folder uh, no no uh, you you need to have a folder working folder okay go to your file menu i'll i'll, I'll let you know don't worry yes uh, yeah, yes open file open folder yes open folder open folder now listen there must be a place where you are you are also connecting your weekly folders of the code is there is there is that available let us can you can you give me a favor can you unmute yourself it looks very bad looks like i am a i am talking to the wall hey sir can you hear me yes i can hear you thank you very much let us uh, no. so let us where is that folder where you keep your all code files uh let me find a one second oh it's, it's so difficult to find <laughs> seneca course is semester 2 that's good and web programming that's wonderful we, yeah 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 so now there must be a week 5 folder over here can create a new folder and call it week 5 yes and now open this folder wonderful select folder that's wonderful and now those who are having problem just see that yes i trust the authors yes you you should trust always the authors now create a new file in this week 5 by going no 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 not maybe not here just for, go to your week yeah just let us in be 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 slow be slow. Oh, my god Oh my God! Open your Visual Studio Code. Where have you? Oh my God! Let us say you are not listening to me at all. Just just be here. Don't do anything unless I ask you. Go to take your cursor to week five, which is written week five on the left top corner. Now, oh my God! Why you are clicking here? I don't know what you are doing. Now you see that there are three buttons. Click on the first button. Yeah. And now index dot html. Type index dot html. hit enter this is your html file let's say i'm sorry if <laughs> if you if you feel offensive you know it's you are not hearing to me you are just listening to me you, you know what i mean you understand you know, that that's fine so are you not able to just like make a folder under you can create you can create a folder by yourself also but you need to open a folder where you are working you know you need to you need to have some folder now quickly type the document that i type that type a tag sign a question mark a uh, sign of exclamation tag sign and sign of exclamation Ah, uh, one more time. Less than, less than symbol, less than. Yeah, doc type. Select that doc type. Hit enter. Wonderful. I hit enter. And again, tag sign like you know, less than sign. HTML, small HTML. Yes, we can create Smith Kumar. I can tell you. And hit, uh, 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 hit enter. Uh, like no, no, no. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now hit enter. You remember? You are not following me, I think. Yes. Now write head. Just write head. And hit enter. And again, hit enter. Write title. Title. One more time. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Just title, title, type title. Yeah. Uh, second, I know. I just want him to just type with me. Okay, title. Hit enter. And now write down my first web page or first web page, whatever. In between that, yes. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now come out of the title and come out of the head. Like after the head, hit enter. No, no, no. Yeah. 
hit enter and now type body just body oh small body hit enter wonderful now type h1 and hit enter and now write um, welcome to my page welcome to web page welcome to my page whatever my page wonderful hit save now right click on this index dot oh my god my god yes so right click on index.html on the left top corner right click on that open with live server magic can you can you uh, your your browser will be open so, okay this this is your document now running your web page is running over here and now okay. now, now let's just do one thing go to your document and uh, hit enter after h1 yes just add one more text or something here so add h1 yes whatever whatever a text yeah h1 and another document or another text something any text now uh, can you can you just keep that file open as well like the browser yeah and now no no you need to just you know settle them yeah hit save control s or hit save yeah you see that your document is updated over there yeah wonderful i'm sorry about that if you if you felt any no you're fine thank you <laughs> i'm sorry because you know it's it really it really you know because you are you are looking to do something and, and someone is going forward okay someone asked that cannot we create a folder while in that one uh, uh, smith kumar has asked smith i will answer you yes we can create folder but let me let me show you let me share my screen first of all so smith kumar i'll i'll just you know let you know that how how to do that see, see here i'll go to my is this one and you see you need to have one working folder over here and now if i want to create another folder there is a button let us and look at this this button if i come over here and i hit this one i am creating a new folder so for example i want to pick my all images inside that one so this is the folder being created over here and for your information this folder will be automatically created in my windows as well smith kumar are you getting that yeah so where do you want to create uh, sir i had a question yeah. uh, i was asking so in visual studio we can just press file new project and we can select like a cpp or c++ right yeah. can we yeah. do that in here yeah we can do that see here so if you go to file mm -hmm. right and you want to just create like you know again listen about that you want to create a file but you need to have a working folder where you want to do that you know right. what i mean maybe mm -hmm. you want to if you want to create a new folder so you see you can say that add folder to work or you can just create but you know you 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 need to have a you need to have a folder to work on so you'll just go to that folder and then you can just create any folders wherever you want you know what i mean so working right. folder has to be over there okay you know what what i mean uh, is it smith kumar i'm talking to i didn't know who's who, who, who i was talking to oh you just speaking to me let me see oh you are let me okay let's start yeah. right so okay so i'll i'll talk about that folder creation as well i meant to say we can make working folder uh is smith actually you know uh, yes i understand what you are saying where are you coming from you want to say as in visual studio we start a new project and this folder is created by itself you want to say that so again again yeah so you are right but again here we have not we don't have that facility rather here we will just you know maybe we have a folder or we can when when you when you just start you can create a folder from there and and you can work on that folder also so there is no project being created like that as we as we have over there you know for that for that answer that, that might be this this the answer but again this should not be a, a a problem for you if you are if you are doing that so i was talking about that there are these symbols that we can use them so now if you see for example i want to create this symbol or any symbol i can just you know find out so there are their values are given over there So, for example, I want to create this world, this thing. So it is plus m n at plus m n. So if I go over there, I want to create there. I'll say at plus m n, and I close that one. So see here, I will get a very interesting symbol over here. You know what I mean? So these are all the symbols that you can create, but just by using so sub two, super two. So if I come over here and I say at sub two. so you see that two will appear as a superscript like that you know as a as a as a superscript something like that does it make sense these are called entities so if you see your notes again lecture notes 
So where is that lecture note gone? Oh, I just closed that. So you see, these are, are called the entities. So entity is what? Special text that should not be confused with HTML markup. Entities begin with L at the rate and ends with this semicolon. For example, if you need to use less than character in your document, you need to use LT instead of this one. You, you remember, you know what I mean? So I'll just copy this definition of entity from this part. And again, I'll put that in my notes so that it is it is with you as well always. Oh, sorry. So this is entity, the fourth one. You understand everyone? Entity, that entity will give us this nice feature of printing of special character if we want anyone. So again, <laughs> you know, just for, just for nothing, if I want to write an HTML document here, I'll have to write this like this, uh, head. Yeah, exactly, it's like, you are right. It's like a space, space, space character. So I'll say, okay, ampersand LT title ampersand. I'm, I'm just showing you something, GT. So just for that purpose. So I have HTML head and title, you know what I mean? So you, if you need to do that, you will have to just escape all these and you will have to use these characters. LT will print that. Make sense, everyone? I will, I will move once I will hear from everyone. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. So I just want to remove that. Now I would like to now talk about the basic structure of document. Welcome to my page. Oh, this is very big. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So now I will take a quick break of five minutes and then I'll start discussion because from this point onward again. So let's take a quick five minutes break. It's 23 in my clock. I will be back at 228 to 229. So just refresh yourself. I will refresh myself as well. See you after five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> so how to run our page? So, you know, you go to your uh, this uh, Windows structure and you will find index.html over here. Right click on that one and open with live server like this. So you see that it will run like this. Is it good? Okay, that's wonderful. I'll just remove that one. Because now, uh, yes, so we are very much starting our, uh, from where we left. So first of all, I would like to talk about this HTML document in general. Let's try to bisect this document and try to see what every line is doing. So first of all, in HTML, whenever something starts with a tag sign and sign of exclamation, remember, it is basically called as a declaration. It is called a declaration. Now, what is a declaration? A declaration is, for example, for this line, the declaration is the document type, the doc type of whatever I will be writing is HTML. So it is basically telling the browser that the document I'm about to start, the document I'm about to write is typically an HTML document. Is that right? Yes, like declaring a variable, it is declaring that it is, it is going to be an HTML document. Now, when you come after that, you'll find, as, I, as, we have, as someone was saying, we'll find the first and the foremost important container, this HTML and, and HTML. And I, will write, I would like to just you know, write that or add that into a structure of HTML document. So we, we want to talk about that, what is the structure? So anything that starts with sign of exclamation like this, like doc type, like doc type, right? HTML, it is called declaration, I told you, declaration. Now, the second main container we I see, the main section I see is the HTML element. You know, HTML element. HTML element, what is this HTML element? My all complete web page should be inside HTML and an HTML tag. Like it should be the component of HTML. It should be the content of, yes, it's a block of HTML where my all web page should reside. 
So everything that that I want to put in my website, everything that you want to put in your website should be should be inside html and and html make sense everything should go inside that one now what is the next section if i open this one i will find that here i have two main mo more sections if i contract this head and body do you see that so html has these two syntactical can you inspect element on right side browser and show us what does why 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 should i inspect that right now i i'll talk about that with, uh, you know uh, i'll talk about inspector later on you know let's listen no it will show the same thing but right now i'm just you know talk i'm just trying to make you understand the code structure then i'll go to the inspector as well and show you where you can find that one right okay so html has two main sections over here one of the section is called head section and one of the section is called body section uh let us and uh, it's a it's a nice comment that you are doing but i would rather say to you just wait for a question if i ask you right why i am saying that it's not it's not a problem the problem is that maybe someone gets confused or looking at your comments so yes this is very nice and you are just giving a, a, everything right but again i would like you to just you know wait for my question if i ask you then you can just reply okay so html has two main sections head and body let's talk about first of all the head head section what is this head section this is very interesting i open this up head section has is a, is a very important section what we place inside head section we place the meta information we place inside head we place we put meta information do you know about meta information information about information information about website who developed it where it was developed what was the date where it has been published like that and also which keywords should be used which keywords will be make will make this website accessible searchable and all things like that so everything goes inside head head has usually everything that does not directly displayed on our web page other than one thing only title element is directly visible on our web page from head section so head head has so many things it's not only the title but only title appears over there do you see the title appears over here everyone can see that my first web page if i go over here and inside title if i go over here and now you can just check that if i change this to nomanathi for example my name and if i hit save so do you see that nomanathi on my page like you see that it is coming as over here so only title is that part which is directly visible other than title you won't find anything that directly that is directly visible so what is what is what is included over there i'll just write in a comment so the meta keywords the search keywords the search keywords and and there are lots of lots of information that we place inside head section so head is just like syntactically head is like the 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 area where we define about website and we define one of the tag which is called title tag this title element is directly appearing on that one otherwise nothing directly appears on our uh, on our page you know what i mean if i change in my first web page you see that it is changed now now this is head section so head section we'll talk about head more and i will i will shortly tell you a few things you will be surprised to see that the head section has some more things that i'll talk about later on now then the third part is the body set body tag body is very important one third is body section body is whatever you want to show to user is put inside body body element or body text something like that now you know listen about that whatever you want to show to user have you seen that whenever i am adding something or subtracting something in the body it just has the effect on my output if i put another h1 so i'll put that inside the body so whatever you have to just show 
you have to put that inside the body. Make sense, everyone? These are the three main sections. And remember, I will, I'm telling you uh, now. I am about to tell you a very important point, and I would like to remember this point because you will you will get confused later on, and you will say, "Okay, we have to do that or that." No, listen about that. That very carefully. This HTML, this head, and this body. These are the basic syntactical structure of HTML that will always remain the same. Other than that, whatever elements we will discuss, they will all be discussed and used inside the body. Why I am saying that? Because there is a there is a confusion that starts with not this class with next class it will start. There is a tag which is called header tag. Now, what the students start doing is when we when we start discussing header. they start getting confused this header and head remember 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 from this class onward header will always come inside the body and the syntactical header or syntactical head is always the head tag is that making sense to everyone this is very important point because i keep on looking at an assignments the students making this very bad mistake they will start when i when i discuss header tag they will put start putting header inside the, uh, above above this body so the summary everything after this one will come inside the body tag so again only only this is the syntactical document that we have you know what i mean i hope everyone understand what i'm saying is there any difference between header and h1 yes there is a lot of difference hangi i'll talk about that but first of all just you you understand what i'm saying hangi did you did you understand what i said that everything now will come inside the body tag understood other than that so no no let us and we cannot keep head open if we keep head open that's a dramatical mistake if i for example if you say if i if i do something like this this is very bad this is bad html because head has to be closed if body has to start oh okay <laughs> okay right i'm sorry i'm sorry okay okay yes sorry you want me to just keep it open right <laughs> okay so it's it's open over here no problem right so my so head head has this title and body whatever i want to show on my document i will put that in body so i'll say welcome to my web page this is my world's first website and i'm running my first website everyone good with me can i have a can i have a yes in the chat window from everyone you understanding what we are talking so this is the basic syntax of the document HTML will always be there, head will always be there, and body will always be there. Other than that, if something is there, good. Not, no problem. Syntactically, I will check your document with these things. Make sense, everyone? And I'll not today. Maybe I'll tell you in the next class that how to check validity of an HTML document. I'll tell you, and you will definitely enjoy that. There is a way to check the validity of HTML document. that whether it's a html valid html document or not anyhow but you understand that okay this is the html document syntax body cannot can body might not contain anything at all so if there is nothing nothing will be displayed you know but usually so again this is this is called our body now i'll write welcome to my web page got everyone the basic structure of html document now how to write comments in html the comments are all of this kind tag sign sign of exclamation dash dash then you write the comments and you close it dash dash and that one and you should not to be worried about this if you hit control plus forward slash you will get the automatic comment you know what i mean if if you want to make a line comment for example i want to make this line comment go to that line and hit control forward slash that line will become a comment yes control forward slash control forward slash will make every line comment and if you want to start a new comment control forward slash you write over here and it gives you can say this is a comment you know what i mean so it has comment is very easy over here so you can comment that document now be ready i am about to about to do something very special with you i would like all of you to select all, all document and delete everything and hit save you might get a warning here and there don't worry about the warning if you get a warning and everything is gone <laughs> you might be thinking what's going on because now i am about to tell you a very interesting shortcut now please be with me and don't don't go fast let's listen by the way 
So just write HTML colon five, HTML colon five, and hit enter. Voila! <laughs> you see what has happened? <laughs> HTML colon five and hit enter. Woo! Magic. Do you see the magic? All document appears. <laughs> Okay, control Z. I know some of some of you have missed that. So you write HTML colon five and hit enter. Okay, HTML colon five is a long way. Remove that. Shortcut, more than shortcut. Hit sign of exclamation. Do you see sign of exclamation? Just sign of exclamation. And hit enter. Even HTML5 is not required. <laughs> You just write sign of exclamation, whole document will be here. Chirag, <laughs> do you see that? It's more of the more of the power. Yes, exactly. So just sign of exclamation and everything is ready. Second, you're right. Everything is cooked for you, already cooked for you. Okay, just don't and you know, I will talk about that, but don't worry about these these things right now. I will I will just you know say for the time being, just you can you can for, for easiness, you can remove. You understand this is also attribute this telling English, but if I just remove them, do you see the same document exactly back with me? And now I can just go over there. So I've just removed a few things for that. Again, I'll, I'll tell you that, but for the first time. So first web page. Now, how easy it is? First web page, and I come over here and I'll say again, H1. I'll talk about H1. Welcome to my page. Okay, and now since I removed all the HTML, refresher is not working because you know it also mines something. But I go and just refresh once, now it will do it. Because you know, once you remove as everything, it will just go away. So again, you enjoyed that. I would like to hear from others as well. Who who else enjoyed that? <laughs> because now this is a shortcut, and I will tell you lots of lots of shortcuts. Be with me. And it's really fun. You are right. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's a real fun to to work on Aaron, and it is really fun, and you will really enjoy that. Okay, now let's now I will just I have talked about this HTML document. I'll talk about this. So so meta tag also. You know the meta tag which was appearing over there. I'll talk about that meta tag later on. So I've talked about the comments, and I'll talk about okay. Now there are certain heading levels in HTML. There are certain heading levels in HTML. What are those starting from the H1? Now, another shortcut is very nice. Now see, Daniel, another shortcut. You just write the type uh, type H2, just type to uh, like H2 and hit enter. You will get the complete tag. This is heading two. Now there are six levels of heading. Come over here, just type H3 and hit enter and write this is heading three. You know what I mean? Come over here, just write H4. This is Heading four. Go after that. H five. This is heading five. After that, H six. This is heading six. Now hit save. You'll get all six headings over there on the left, on the right. Got it, Daniel? Everyone got that six levels of headings: H one, H two, H three, H four, H five, H six. Now remember, usually when on your document you want to put a heading over there, we use H1 till H6. H1 is the biggest heading, and H2 is smaller than that one. H3 is more smaller than that one. H4 is more smaller than that one. You know what I mean? And and this just keeps on. H6 is the smallest of the heading. You see, if I make it a bit bigger, so you know, two hundred percent. Uh, can you call multiple header H6 for paragraph? Let us end. I'll tell you. Um, so, you know, one of the things you need to keep in mind, let us end as a question. Can you call multiple header H6 for paragraph? Listen, heading or H1 to H6 have a definite purpose. So if you, if you really are putting a heading, you will put it as a heading. I'll, I'll tell you a, a very nice example over here. I'll, I'll, because you know, let is and then you decide you will you will use paragraph or not H six for the paragraph or not. I'll give you another another thing. Welcome to my web page, right? And I say I I want to give a subheading of this one. So I'll write H two. My intro, right? And here I will give my intro. 
So I'll write a paragraph, my introduction, right? I'm creating a website short. Now, another shortcut coming your way. Lethison, your question is still there. I'll talk about that. But first of all, let over here. There is a very nice facility. The one thing is that I type something and I just keep on gibberish typing. This looks, this takes very, very much time. A shortcut. Everyone in between this P, come over here and write L-O-R-M. Lorem Ipsum is a very nice feature. You just slice Lorem and hit enter. Another magic, Daniel. <laughs> we have got a paragraph cooked for you, which is very gibberish. We don't know what's written. Maybe it's Spanish or maybe it's, we don't know what's that. <laughs> it's Latin or whatever, right? So you see that Lorem Ipsum gives me a complete text. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So now see that. Hit save. So now I am I'm starting a para, uh, you know, my introduction. So can you tell me if after my intro, I want to say my family. So which tag I should use? It should be H3 or H2. Can anyone tell me? Let me say H3. Smith, you are right. Smith is right. It will be H2. You know why? My family, for example. I'll tell you, you know why. Um, so I write paragraph, and again, I just give another lorem here. So my family. Uh, yes, same size, because these are the same level headings. You know what I mean? Okay, so now, if I if I give another heading, and I want to say my courses, for example, I want to say my courses. So again, I'll do the, use the my H2, and I'll say my courses. Again, just for nothing. My courses. And now I want to, I would like to tell, you know, I would I have a subheading for that one. For example, the first course is that 222. I have a subheading of my courses. Should I use H2 again or I should use H3 over here? That's wonderful. Everyone understand that H3. Now this is a semantical understanding as well. So I say web 222 and I, I have another one. So I'll say, okay, uh, let's write something about web 222 and write lorem about this. So web 222, you see that it's a subheading. And now if I want to put another course, should I use, again, I'm inside the my courses. Should I use H3 or H2? I want to do, F, yeah, exactly H3. Web322, like that. And I would like to place some paragraph text over, over here as well. Lorem, again. Are you understanding that? Now, now if inside Web222, I have another heading, for example, I want to say module one, module two, which tag I should use inside Web22, by the way, remember. Inside Web 2.2, which tag I'll use? I'll use H4 and I'll say, for example, module one, you know, just for nothing. Module one is this. You see what, what I'm doing, that's, that's a wonderful thing. So I come over here and I say, okay, I have another module, H4, module two. And I can have a paragraph over here as well of lorem. Ah, oh, yes, so uh, yeah. Exactly. So we can do that by by using styling and by using CSS. Not right now. Don't worry about the style right now. We can do that. We can we can make a, we can make them indent. Don't don't worry about that. But right now, you see that they are typically showing me the heading levels. You understand what does that mean? So for example, if I come over here and I say, okay, my family, my course is over. I want to say ending, ending. So which tag I should use? Ending or maybe you know summary something like that. So I'll use again H2 because I want to make a same level heading. Summary. So you see that level wise headings are, and you're, you're right that if there was, uh, you know, indenting that would have made more sense. So in summary, I'll say, for example, for summary, I want to say that uh, first, all right? And I'll use again. So again, I'll, I'll just, you know, mark this some, some other way. So if I say summary, so or, or not summary, I'll say, okay. This is heading number five, for example. So this will be what? 5.1. You know what I mean? And if there is something inside this H3, I'll say H4, 5.1.1. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm doing? This heading inside that one. Now, if I have to write 5.2, which, which tag I should use? 5.2. Only Lethison is replying. Okay, second, thank you. H3, I'll say H3, thank you. More guys have replied. So I'll say 5.2. You see, now if I want to make a subheading of this one, I'll say H4, 
2.1, something like that. You understand, everyone? This is the heading levels, and this is wonderful because you know, um, this is wonderful because you know we we know that it's basically what it's the heading levels that we have. So we can have multiple heading levels, and I can just leave that over here, or, or this this is just making a mess of it. So I'm just you know releasing that everything. But I hope you understand this H1 and H2 and H3 everything. And they have their own definite purposes in our document. If it says yes, that's wonderful. Now I would like to just you know discuss some other things over here. We have discussed the heading levels. Okay. Right, so now I would like to talk about some other things. So we have talked about H1, we have talked about paragraph. Paragraph is just a paragraph that we give and a paragraph appears, it has its own size. Exactly, yes, yes, that's, that's right, that's right. Now there are some other things that we want to discuss over here. So there is something called lists in HTML. So what I'll do is that I'll make an H2 and I'll say lists in HTML. I want to discuss what are the different types of lists in HTML. So we have two lists in HTML. Again, see here. I would I would make this what? So if I were uh, if I have to make a uh, you know sub part, I will do H3. One is called ordered list, and the other one is called again because that's the, these are the same level unordered list. So I have two lists: ordered list and unordered list. And now I'll move a back for for the notes for a for a second because I want to show you something over here. So we have two types of lists. One is ordered and two is unordered. Now ordered lists are created by using the tag sign OL, like OL element. And unordered list is created by using UL. Right, got everyone? So let's take an example. And every element and Every element that has to be the part of this, every element should be inside an li. Li is called list item. And I'll tell you how to make this list. Ordered list is basically just like numbering. And unordered list is just like bullets. Right? So yes. So now let's go back over here and, and let's talk about this. First of all, ordered list. I want to create an ordered list. So I will write OL, again, hit enter. Now I write LI, and again, I will say, for example, web222. I want to make another list item, LI, web322, and maybe LI, web422. Now let's see what happens. One, two, three, four. I've got the numbering over there. And don't worry about that. We can change numbering. We can we can make it ABC. We can do a lots of lots of things. Not right now, right? So this is ordered list. Now, if I want to represent this same as an unordered list, what I'll do? I'll use UL, and let's copy and paste this same over here. Unordered list is bullets. Make sense, everyone? Unordered list is basically bullets. Now, a shortcut coming your way. <laughs> I keep on telling you the shortcuts. And this is very interesting. So in this OL, let's first of all, the OL has removed. Now there is no ordered list. In this OL, I want to create five, five subject lists, five lists, LI, five list items. See here, magic. I will write LI, multiply sign, and five. Li multiply by five. Sweet. Happy? <laughs> Li multiply by five. I will get five allies over here. Ah, yes, let us see here. Whatever tag you have to make. So I write Li multiply sign like asterisk, and I say five. Five Li will appear if you hit enter. Let us that that deserves a wow, right? <laughs> because now, now we don't need to write it again and again, and it will just keep on developing for the codes. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, for example, this is five now appearing, and I can write 
like a b you know just just filling it up b <laughs> yes you're right so uh, one two three four abcd is appearing and you know it's not only for that one if you want to create some some any element that you want to create multiple times you can come over here and you can say for example uh, you want to create h1 5h1 so you say h1 multiply by 5 hit enter you will 5h1 right so this is another shortcut on your way just type the tag sign and multiply symbol and type that 10 h1 right so we'll talk about that one as well okay then i would like to talk about today because we have we have such, such, such still some some time Ah, there, there was a there was a discussion that is remaining, and I would like to talk about that discussion. I, and and I'll, I'll just do that. So I want to just here. I would just put H two. H two. Oh my God. <laughs> Why it is not recognizing me anymore? Yeah. So H two. I want to say that um, images. How to bring images in HTML. So I just, you know, right now start, start. Uh, nesting of what, say again? Nesting of what you are asking? Oh, uh, automatic text, automatic tags. Ah, yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, because since you have asked this question, so I'll just repeat that. <laughs> now it's a very interesting thing. There is a, uh, we'll talk about that. There is a tag, div tag. So I can say div. Um, multiply by five. Multiply by P. Let me just check. Oh, no. Um, I'm just forgetting that. I'll just let you know. We can do the nesting, by the way. Just don't worry. And I'm just forgetting the syntax. I'll let you know that what is the syntax for that one. You can have, you know, multiple things collected together. I'll just, I'll just tell you. I just don't remember the syntax right now. Anyhow, so images in HTML. Now, we have a discussion remaining that IMG was not considered as an element when we were counting. Because I will just, you know, now tell you. So to bring pictures in our, to bring pictures in our, to bring images in our HTML document, we use IMG tag. Okay, so IMG tag, I'll have to just again do that. LT, IMG, and ampersand GT. So to bring images, we use what? IMG tag. Now, how to use that? I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Write down IMG and hit enter. Now, it is asking for a source from where this picture should come from. Now, now I would like you to just, you know, do something. Come to your week five folder or whatever folder you have, create a new folder and say images. Images will always be placed inside that. You know what I mean? And, and maybe from my, uh, I have just collected some car pictures over here for this purpose. Here is that card pictures, card pictures, card pictures. Oh, then, oh yeah, card pictures. This is here. So I'll just take a few card pictures from somewhere randomly, control C, and I will paste that in my folder because right now I'm doing that, of course, and you 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 can just copy. So I come to the lecture course folder, week five, images, and I paste this over here. And not only this, it's our step, what's that picture? I can rename that. Rename that picture. car1 it's a jpg file car1 jpg right let me just see the properties over here so i've just copied copied this picture yes we can we can have a, a website resource as well you're right listen but right now I'm taking this from the from the from the big from the area. now see here how to how to how to bring that picture from over, over here now this is very important so i will say in the source i will say dot forward slash it will tell me the root folder. What is where is the picture? Picture is inside images. You know what I mean? So I'll say dot forward slash images forward slash car one dot jpg.
Okay. Am I back for everyone? Looks like my internet got uh, disconnected. Okay, yes, wonderful. Okay, let me share my screen. And let me show you over here. So do you see my picture, uh, like my screen again? Yes, okay. So now this picture is very big. So I can come over here and I can say width equal to, for example, 300. You can just write down width is equal to 300 and it will become 300 wide. Yes. So I just made that. And maybe more, more less than that. I can do 200. So the picture should be smaller than that one. Right? So this is 100. Yes, I can repeat the source part. So see here. SRC is equal to, when you say dot forward slash, we are talking about the current directory. And in this current directory, I have another directory, which is images, the one. So I say dot forward slash. In this current directory, there is another directory, images. Go inside that and bring the picture. Dot forward slash, as Daniel has mentioned. The one got it? Yeah. Let's listen, what do you, what do you want me to try? You want me to just bring some page. So now, now, now I can I can bring a picture from a website as well. So there is a website very important, nsplash.com. Oh, uh, can you image folder and copy the whole text and paste it in that source destination? Uh, I'm not. I'm not getting you. What do you want? Can you go to the image folder and copy the whole text? From the picture, whole text, I'm not getting that. You you mean code? I should share code with you? Hey, sir. So for the source, if you could go to the image folder and yeah. copy the actual source, like that whole thing. And if you paste it into there, would it still have the same image? No, no, I'm, I'm not getting it. Can you read that? Just read that? Uh, yeah. Can you just go to your folder that you have open there? Uh, from the from the, from the windows? For the images. Yeah. yeah. If you just copy, you see the top, right, where it says, OneDrive, Seneca, Spring. Yeah, yeah. So if you click on that, so if you copy that and paste it in there, put it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's wonderful. And by the way, this is this is this is right. I can do that one as well. Listen, but you, but you listen about that one. That right. would that would be very bad for me. And why is that? Because if I do that and I I share this document with you, like this folder with you, you will never find my picture over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand. So again, because it's so cool. <laughs> you, you, you understand? So, for example, if I if I come over here and if I do that, and it will be very bad over here. You see? Okay. Am I back? Looks like my internet is having some some. Uh, you're images. still. Here. Am I back? Oh, my my screen is also shared. So if I come over here and if I if I just you know paste that 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 path. If that if I paste that path. Now, what is the problem? Right now, picture will appear. But let us what if I copy this folder and share it with you? You will never be able to find this picture. Even though my complete folder will be with you, I will I will send you my this week five folder, but you will never find my picture over there. And that is the mistake that the students do. When I run their assignments, we never find the picture. Why? Because they have shared this path over there. Don't use this absolute path over there. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, sir. I understand. Okay, that's wonderful. And now I was about to tell you another very interesting aspect. And I will just, you know, definitely I will never do this one. Why? Because I want to always keep it with that one. Sorry. Dot slash images slash car dot jpeg and alt equal to any picture or something like that. Whatever is that alt. I don't worry about that. Right, something like that. So now you see here, I'll, I'll show you something. So this is one if one, if one website, this is called unsplash.com. This provides free, free, you know, uh, free pictures as well. If I, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm telling you, Daniel, just wait for me. Car, I want, I want to find out a car picture. So for example, this car, I like this. Right click on this car picture and copy image address, copy image address and come over here and change the source with this copy image address, copied image address. So it will bring this picture from this part. Now see here, I get that picture. And it's 200 looks smaller now. So I can do it 300. Or maybe 400 will be good. <laughs> 
yes let us an alt is the if the picture does not gets uploaded uh, like you know it's not available so for example if i if i make this bad if i make bad, the alternate text will appear this is called alt text car picture here so it will just show car picture over here with a damaged with a damaged icon can you add a link there as well no 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 uh, we usually don't do that we usually don't do that right so when i when i have the right one it will just you know it will just you know show the picture everyone understand that we can bring a picture over here by using img but my topic of discussion is still remaining <laughs> now my question i am talking about images so i use this img would you say that this img is an element because it does not have a body it does not have an ending tag so would you consider it as an element or not my question do you consider this as an element or not because there is no there is no ending tag of that one if you see here there is no ending tag of this one no no that is no it will only become an element if that comes inside the body you know i i understand you know what you are saying so let me say if if i was able to do something like this if i could place picture over here by some mean then it would be called as an element but it is not there but listen an important very important thing some elements they do not require a pair tag rather html does what it makes them an element by placing a forward slash before their ending so all those tags they do not which do not require a companion so you saw you remember that html automatically added a forward slash after this img i'll show you one more example there is a tag called br break line break it is also a singular tag if i hit br it's only br when when i hit save look at my br it becomes a forward slash because html now says that there should be no singular tag so it is a pair tag but this is called technically these are called empty elements they are called empty elements are you getting that concept if the element does not have a content you close it by you open it and close it in the same place and this will be called as an empty element other than let us and how many if you understand it will be called as it is still an element but an empty element so if you are counting the elements over here you will count this as also as an element but this will be called as an empty element these are called empty elements divan got it that's wonderful is that okay for everyone and now how many if you are motivated to take zbb second session on friday as well because this is very interesting and i will just keep on discussing this one and i will discuss some more html fun over there So, how many of you are motivated to go there? When am I counting number of elements? No, 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 sir. This is not important at all. This is not important at all. I'm just giving that example that if you are counting that that I'm just wanting to remember, like you know, recognize. I want you to recognize that element. So, it is still an element. Don't worry about the counting. That's not important, sir. You are right. That's no importance of counting elements. So, do you know what I mean? I just wanted you to realize that one. <laughs> okay so again who who is motivated to join zbb live session on friday at second like 5 10 pm i don't know i i find very few people over there but again you know this discussion is <laughs> this discussion is very very interesting and you will definitely find this uh, yeah no problem let us and you can always look at that uh, that video uh, lecture should later on but now we are ending over here and hopefully everyone understood that one i'll share this code with you after that week uh, week will end so you will have your quiz like test
Okay, I'm back again. Looks like my internet is having some problem, but we are all, 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 already done. So, uh, Het, I'm expecting it to be released by today or tomorrow. Hopefully, Het, by tomorrow. Right? You will definitely get the result of assignment one. Het, got it? Okay, so if you have, if you don't have any other question, you can just, you know, Okay, so bye everyone. Let us and we can discuss it later on, right? No worries.